Yo, what's good, guys? It's Saint, and I'm back with another look at some video. Um, by the way, my voice is kind of weird right now because I'm sick, but uh, yeah. So now this is kind of a different video from what I usually do because, um, you know, I mainly do like more power skating. I don't even know if I do power skating. Mainly, uh, I just I don't know what I do, but yeah, this is different from whatever I usually do. But I found it really interesting and I wanted to talk about it. So uh, yeah. Now then, while I was watching Kaiseni and Luganel's latest videos on lookism, I realised that there was a female lookism that was going on. Now for a while, everyone was loving the intense, drama-filled and action-packed lookism, but lots of people started to dislike this due to the fact that more fans, they started to miss the old lookism when it was more of a slice of life. But it had intense moments too and was actually packed too but sadly that's not how lookism was lately i'd say within the last 300 chapters lookism has felt like more of a fan service um being fight after fight and no doubt about it the fights were amazing but come to like think about it the fights were just coming to us like way too fast you know but uh yeah uh the workers arcs in general were extremely long lasting around two years or something at this point and it's like we didn't really get to get um memorable moments that impacted us as the readers like or like get anything really impactful so yeah now logan L classified this into three different parts of lookism early lookism middle lookism and current lookism oh my god my voice is horrendous right now but uh yeah um the topic of this video is to expand on this concept and i've given my own labels to these individual parts of lookism and now without any more time being wasted let's get in pause now early lookism was a <coughs> My bad, my bad. Um, now, early lookism was a slice of life and more subtle version of lookism. We had amazing fights, thrilling adventures and compelling storylines. It was full of emotion and while the art style was like, you know, it was pretty good. And the stories like, they, they impacted us the most and wanted us to keep reading. So that's why I labelled this as classic lookism. The classic lookism that everybody loves and misses. Now, I'm also using the classic era of antiquity, which was the, um, used to describe the times of like the Roman Empire defining like classical architecture and culture i saw a fit in this since early lookism was absolute peak and how the classic era in like the classic era was i can't even talk um my bad guys so yeah the classic era in lookism was more like in positive light just how like early lookism was in positive light so yeah and now i'm just yapping but back to the topic now classic lookism spanned mainly from chapter one all the way to like chapter 287 major arcs in uh, classic lookism were such as the god dog arc the one night arc and the hostile arcs along with the illegal total arc these were amazing arcs that built into the story and um, set the stage for how it is right now but they were all nice and at a steady pace we got to see the art style improve as we were you know getting able to see like um better storylines along with the fact that lookism was just amazing at this point but as we got into the four major crews it would start like it would start what all right it would slowly start to climax bringing us to more of like bring us from more of a peaceful um setting full of like slice of life into the gang wars now me personally i enjoyed the gang wars a lot the reason i got into lookism was simply because of the fact that like I used to see a lot of fights and edits on TikTok and you know, I was just into lookism because of that. But I also like enjoyed lookism for lookism, you know. The fights pulled me into the story but the slice of life moments and compelling stories with great meanings that actually taught stuff such as self-improvement and not to judge a book by its cover. It's what made lookism like lookism, you know. It made me like fully into lookism. And slowly that would start to fade with chapter 287. Now begins middle lookism or as I like to call it, the dark age lookism. Dark Age Lookism was the beginning of, of um, the workers arc and it was basically like the longest arc in Lookism with four arcs in total along with his four affiliates you know and the whole war arc too the workers arcs it was really long um, but yeah now that the Dark Age of Lookism is over well i wouldn't say it was necessarily bad by the way in fact some of the biggest highlights of lookism came from dark age lookism just how i used the classic era to define early lookism i'm using the dark age era or the medieval era as an example to describe middle lookism dark ages was when europe fell in decline due to the fall of rome along with um the fact that even though it was a dark age there was still like lots of significant moments in uh, history that were made along with the part that like in other parts of the world the dark age was actually a really like great and golden age so yeah now i mainly use this term to describe middle lookism because the fights were choreographed amazingly there was fan service that even i guiltily enjoyed is that even a word guiltily uh whatever anyways 
and there was a lot of mysterious give uh, mysteries ugh, mysteries given to us while we also uncovered mysteries such as the secret behind James Lee along with the fact that we learned about the first generation but the problem with dark lookism dark age lookism is that while we got amazing fights and fan service it will start to decline later on the part where like dark age lookism really started to feel a bit annoying was during like the hunt for big deal arc to the hunt for gun park arc because it just felt so repetitive along with the fact that the first affiliate arc um during lookism that was like the highlight of dark age lookism since they had amazing fights but like i'm pretty sure it was the most disappointing arc in lookism but yeah though we did have amazing arcs such as the Chion liang arc but characters like mu jin jin were just introduced so randomly and labeled as on par with gabriel kim which was weird since like he was just introduced and to make it weirder he was the father of vin jin which really just it just looked like an excuse to make vin jin look uh, strong and full of potential although having seon ji yuk as his trainer was enough and then there was the you know the amount of fights that looked similar to others along with like ptj using the same panels the whole of the workers arcs felt so long as well and the worst part about it gun park's ui version 2 was the biggest ass pull we've ever had and then when he defeated ui daniel it was just terrible writing but yeah, that brings us to the end of Dark Age Lookism, because although this happened, there were times where like, you know, we'd get slice of life moments here and there. But I'd say now it's safe to say that we've been brought out of the Dark Age Lookism fully. And now that brings us to Renaissance Lookism. Now, we've had a great like amount of uh, slice of life moments lately. Big names such as Gite Kim have arrived in the scene, along with the fact that we're getting Gun Park's backstory arc, followed up by possibly a hostile arc, which would be amazing and like just a great side story to conclude the mystery behind Eli Jang and Oli Wang. And then finally, um, you know, the future of Lucasm with Gete as like the head antagonist. It seems like we're in one hell of a great future for Lucasm, but yeah. Hopefully it all goes well and that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. See ya.